Well, everybody, the day is here. Today, we are doing the Red Komodo review, and I'm very excited to talk about it. I've had it for the past five months, and I've really enjoyed using it. And I'll talk to you guys about my experiences, what I've liked, what I haven't liked so much. More after this. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Jeff Fagan. I'm a filmmaker and DP based in South Florida, which is actually gonna come into a part of this review today. And we are talking about the Red Komodo in my review of it after using it for the past five months. Now, a lot of people have been asking me why it took me so long to come out with this review. And to keep it short, I wanted to have the camera in my hands and using it for a while before I could come out with this review. When I first got this Stormtrooper model, it was in beta, and I didn't feel like it was fair to review the model in beta. And then once the actual production firmware came out, I felt like I needed to use it and actually put it through its paces in order to give this thing a proper review. So let's talk a little bit of why I bought the Red Komodo. So as I said in the intro, I am based in South Florida and it's not the heaviest production environment. So in some cases, buying a Red camera isn't necessarily the best investment here. So what happened was I had a few clients that wanted to use Red cameras on their productions and were willing to take the leap and try Komodo. So I did the math and figured, you know what? If I purchase the Red Komodo instead of renting a camera like I normally do, I can actually test the camera and put it through its paces in instead of just renting a camera and having it for a few weeks at a time, and actually get to know the RED ecosystem. Because when I've used RED cameras in the past, I've really done it more as a DP camera op perspective, and I haven't really edited the files. So by purchasing this camera, I've really been able to use it for an extended period of time and put it through its paces. So let's talk about who is the RED Komodo for? So the Red Komodo was originally designed primarily for people who are using the Komodo as a secondary camera in the Red ecosystem. This is a great option to do that on those shoots. The Komodo allows you to have a Super 35 sensor in a very small profile that is a RED camera, has the classic R3D raw codec capabilities while having the quality of other RED cameras. It also has this ultra compact and small form factor that the other RED cameras don't have. In addition to that, it also has global shutter. When you can use this thing in more action cam type scenarios, you have the benefits that global shutter gives you. Not to say that this camera can't be used as a primary A camera. It absolutely can. In my opinion, to use this as an A camera, it'll involve purchasing some extra accessories that will build up the camera a little bit more, but will absolutely make this a kick butt A camera in your productions. So let's talk about codecs and resolutions that the Red Komodo offers. It shoots in R3D RAW and ProRes. In R3D, it shoots 6K up to 40 frames per second, 5K up to 48 frames per second, 4K up to 60 frames per second, and 2K up to 120 frames per second. In each one of those resolutions, it is windowed in on the sensor, so you do take a little bit of a crop when you go to each lower resolution. So in ProRes, the sensor size that you use dictates the frame rate you're gonna get even though you can shoot in 4K and 2K. So if you use the full sensor of 6K, you can shoot 4K up to 40. If you shoot in the 5K crop, you could shoot up to 48 frames. And if you shoot in the 4K crop, you can shoot in 60 frames. Same will go for 2K. Me personally, I've used R3D way more than ProRes just because I found the R3D codec is way more versatile than using ProRes. But having ProRes in this camera, especially when you need super quick turnaround times is absolutely a benefit. And I'm glad that it is in this camera. So let's talk about lenses. So when the camera first was released, they actually gave you the EF to RF adapter so you can use EF lenses. And recently, RED released the beta firmware so you can use RF lenses. Now, full disclosure, I don't own any RF lenses, so I haven't been able to test the camera with RF, but I have plenty of EF lenses, and I have to say, they have been a joy to use on the RED Komodo. The autofocus on this camera is better than any RED camera out there, and it's better than some other cameras like Panasonic. There hasn't been one EF lens that I've had an issue with the autofocus, but I will let you know, it's not like I have every EF lens, so I would do your own testing to see how the autofocus works, but again, for the most part, having autofocus on this camera is a breeze, and especially if you're gonna use this as a secondary camera, having the autofocus on these lenses absolutely helps, especially when keeping this thing as a secondary camera, so you don't have to pull focus, and if it's in heavy action, you can just be confident that this thing is going to work on its own to get the shot. 
Now when it comes to the RF mount on the Komodo, the really cool thing with me is not as much using RF mount lenses, but being able to use things like the Canon Focal Reducer, being able to use Canon's variable ND mount adapter, which basically solves certain issues that the Komodo had. As far as lenses, the main lenses I've used are the Tokina 11 to 16, the Sigma 18 to 35 1.8, the Sigma 30 millimeter 1.4, and the Canon 70 to 200 F4 version one, the original version. I actually can't wait to use that lens with newly released Canon Speed Booster because it'll turn that F4 lens into an F2.8, which is great, and it'll give me more of that full frame field of view. Right now, the focal reducer from Canon is on heavy back order, so it's been a little bit difficult to get my hands on one, but as soon as I can, I will be doing a review on that. So let's talk about the top screen interface here. So there is a top screen on the Komodo and it allows you to monitor the camera. It also allows you to go through the different menus that the camera has. Now using this top screen, especially when using the Komodo as a secondary camera, allows you to keep the profile of this camera really nice and small. But for a lot of users, it's not gonna be quite big enough to actually monitor the camera. There are tons of videos showing what the menu systems look like. So we're going to gloss over that. I'll put some links in the description down below and we'll skip to monitoring solutions. So the RED Komodo has a few different ways to monitor it. You'll notice there is a Wi-Fi antenna right here and the Komodo has Wi-Fi with a Wi-Fi app for both iOS and Android devices. The Komodo over the Wi-Fi will give you full screen monitoring of this camera. It'll also give you full control over this camera. Now, I have really enjoyed using the app and it has been a great tool. Gimbal work specifically has been a blessing having that Wi-Fi app. Now, one thing I do wanna mention is when using the Wi-Fi app, if you're in very crowded areas, I have noticed there is a potential for interference. Sometimes you can just change the Wi-Fi channel and that will help with your interference. Sometimes it's just too much interference to fix, which is where it's great that there is an SDI port on here so we can have SDI based monitors. There are obviously tons of external monitors you can choose from when trying to pick one for the Komodo. Specifically, I use the Small HD Focus 5 SDI. It was a nice cheap monitor that went on sale when the Stormtrooper Komodos went out. So I got it right away just so I would have an external monitor. But Small HD makes other monitors that can actually control the Komodo. And there are other companies that are making monitors that can actually control this in the near future. There are tons of monitor solutions. And I would recommend do a little bit of research, see what fits your workflow. If you plan on using the Red Komodo as an A-camera, I would absolutely pick up an external monitor even if you plan on using the Wi-Fi app most of the time. Speaking of SDI, there's one thing I would like to mention and a lot of these monitors come with 3G SDI cords. RED actually recommends that you use 12G SDI. By doing so, it'll actually prevent potential damage from occurring to the SDI port. Ever since the Stormtrooper models came out, there have been some reports of SDI damage and nearly all of the reports had to include the use of 3G SDI. So it has to do something with the shielding. If you look on the RED website, they explain it a little bit further and they do recommend that you use 12G SDI cords. After using 12G SDI ports, I find that it's a little bit easier to attach them to my SDI port. So I absolutely won't go back to using 3G SDI. But I just wanted to let you guys know as most of my monitors that came with SDI were all 3G SDI cords. So let's talk about media. The RED Komodo uses generic CFAS 2.0 cards, which was one of the selling points of this camera. They have a RED approved list on their website, which includes Angelbird, Sony, SanDisk, and ProGrade, and you can see more about that on their website. So I use the Sony 128 gigabyte cards really just because they're transplants coming over from my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera. The other type of media that I use is actually a CC Tech SSD to CFAS 2.0 adapter, which lets you actually use SSDs to use as your recording media on the RED Komodo. It has an N lead that hooks into the CFAS 2.0 port, and the only negative to it is really that you end up having a cord that sticks out of the Komodo. So I tend to only use it when the camera is locked down on sticks. When I'm doing gimbal work, although when I first got the camera I used it, I started sticking with the CFAS 2.0 cards just to keep the camera as compact as possible. Just to let you guys know, a lot of these SSD to CFAS 2.0 adapters are not RED approved and how well they work also depends on what kind of media you're using. I am using a lot of SanDisk SSDs and I've 
have actually had varying results. Some of them work well, some of them don't work well at all. So I'd recommend to do your own experimenting if you're gonna go that route. Again, you can use them, but the best way to go with the Red Komodo is just using CFAS 2.0 cards. So let's talk about ports. So we know that the Komodo has CFAS 2.0. The Komodo also has a 3.5 millimeter microphone jack, a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, there is the EXT port, which offers different versions of connectivity and timecode. There is the SDI port, and there is the DCN. Now on the top of this camera that on here you see is actually covered by my NATO rail, there is an interface port, which right now works with the red outrigger handle and also the red link adapter. And I'm assuming red will come out with more accessories in the future. The camera also does have a hard record button right here. Uh, kind of oddly placed. I never really use it ever. Uh, I used it on one shoot where I kind of just wanted that hard touch button, but my plan is I'm going to get the Tilta uh, run start stop cable that hooks up to the Nucleus Nano so I could just use the start stop on my Nucleus Nano hand wheel. So let's talk about power and battery solutions. So the camera was made to use with two BP batteries. I actually have two different kinds that I use. I have the 975, which are the bigger versions of the BP batteries. And I also have the 915, which the 915s are not red approved. But what happens is, and you can see by me putting it on the camera right here, it keeps the profile super slim and allows for me to use this camera on much smaller gimbals, such as the Weebill S, which you may have seen in an earlier video that I did. It also allows me to use even larger lenses with some bigger gimbals that just have weight distribution issues with the Komodo. For instance, when I use these 915 batteries with the Zhiyun Crane 2S, I can actually use a Sigma 18 to 35, whereas if I use any bigger batteries than these 915s, I cannot use the Komodo in the 18 to 35 on that gimbal. Primarily, what I have been using the most is this plate from Core SWX, which hooks into the two BP slots on the back of the camera and lets you put V-mount batteries on the camera. It's fully red approved, and so there is pass-through, and it also gives you a few other cool options. So by using this adapter, with these nano micro batteries from Core SWX, you get about four hours if you don't have any accessories attached. But the cool part is, between the V-mount battery itself and poor battery plate, you have multiple power slots like the DTAPs they offer, like the USB out, also the Limo. So you can do things like power your follow focus, an external monitor, a wireless video transmitter. It lets you turn the camera into much more of an A cam than just by using it with these BP batteries. By using one of these plates, it really helps you transform the Komodo into a powerhouse A camera where you can power everything from one battery type, which helps because then you're only charging one kind of battery and you're not charging a bunch of different little batteries. The audio on this camera, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, is okay. It's not much better or worse than really any other DSLR out there. So the main recommendation would be if you're gonna take audio seriously, I would have some kind of external audio device. I still use a Zoom H4n audio recorder. I've seen a lot of other people use other solutions. If you have a powered audio solution going into the Komodo and it's a strong audio source, then you'll be fine with recording audio internally in the Komodo. But if you're not going to be putting a strong audio source into the Komodo, I would absolutely recommend recording it externally. Another thing that I didn't go over yet is rigging solutions. Now, I absolutely recommend getting a cage if you're going to use the Komodo as a primary camera. Me personally, I actually have the cage from Small Rig on pre-order. It should be here in a week or two, and I will be doing a review on it soon enough. But for now, as you could probably notice, I have these Timmy ribs from GDU, and they work really great for rigging accessories to the sides of this camera. I also have a NATO rail on the top of the camera, which also helps you quickly install different accessories like monitor mounts, handles, really whatever you need that can be on the NATO rail, you can just take on and off very quickly. So I'd like to end this video saying this, if you live in areas like LA, Atlanta, Vancouver, Toronto, New York, and they're areas that are very heavily influenced by the film industry, you're constantly on set with cameras like RED, ARRI, then the RED Komodo is probably going to be a really great investment for you because you'll be able to make not only money as a camera operator, but 
probably being able to rent this camera out and just have a lot more use cases for it. If you're like me and you're a freelancer and you live somewhere like South Florida where the film industry really isn't that prevalent, you really have to answer a few questions whether the Red Komodo is going to be the right camera for you. Me specifically, like I said in the beginning of the video, I had a few clients that specifically wanted RED cameras and the cost of those shoots justified the purchase of the Komodo to let me try it. However, if I did not have those clients, I would not be here today with the RED Komodo. And it's not because it's a bad camera, it's because the cost of a lot of my work down here, I do a lot of documentary, I do a lot of corporate work, and I do a lot of music videos to where their budget isn't necessarily in the range of a RED camera, even one as cheap as the RED Komodo. So you have to kind of ask yourself, are your clients willing to pay for the Red Komodo if you're not in those industries? If you're not going to be using this as a secondary camera to Reds on set, if this is gonna be your primary camera, will you have the work to justify the cost of the Komodo? If you have to go out and put yourself in financial hardship for a Red Komodo, then I would say stick with something like a Pocket 4K and a 6K and make your money with that camera. I am very happy with the Pocket 4K, and for a lot of my work, I'm still using my Pocket 4K as my primary camera. All that being said, I absolutely love the Komodo. I have no plans to get rid of it anytime soon, and I'll be doing a lot more content about it here on the channel. So if you guys have any questions that I didn't go over in this video, and I'm sure there's more than a few, please feel free to put them in the comments down below. And if you guys got knowledge out of today's video, please make sure to hit that like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. And until next time, my name's Jeff Fagan. I'll see you guys in the next video.